Okay, hello everyone and welcome to week two of Digital Ocean School. For those of you that are logging in for the first time, my name is Ellie and I'm part of the education team here at Surfers Against Sewage. So for the next two months until the end of July, we are going to be bringing you the best bits of our Ocean Schools and Plastic Free Schools campaigns live on our social media channels twice every week. And for those of you just logging in, you are in week two of Digital Ocean School, so welcome. Now, the reason that we're doing this is while we can't be working with you guys in your schools at the moment, what we can do is continue to build a platform where we can share some of the best bits of our work with you and set you off on tasks to keep you busy, whether you're at home, whether you're at school, whether you're working from home, um, we will keep you engaged in what's happening in our oceans. So, last week we focused on the rocky shoreline of the UK and I explained what a rocky shoreline was. We've got one behind me here. And I also introduced you guys to some of the fascinating creatures that call this extreme habitat home. Now, in this live stream, I would like you guys to be commenting and I'm gonna ask you some questions. And my first question to you guys is who can tell me what a rocky shoreline is? We've got Emily, who is on the SAS Instagram, uh, Facebook account, who is gonna be replying to some of your answers. So if you can type it in for me now, that would be amazing. What is a rocky shoreline? Today's lesson, we're gonna be zooming into the rocky shoreline and focusing on a really small habitat called a rock pool. I also have a very special task for you guys, and that is going to be completed during the week. So last week, I sent you guys the task of finishing some of our rocky shoreline activities and it was amazing to see the work that you guys have been doing at home. Thank you so much for tagging us in some of that work and I wanted to give a special shout out to Bran and I'm going to show you guys a picture now. So here we have Bran and Bran was creating a limpet habitat from things that he found around the house. And Bran, we were super impressed with this photograph because we loved the labelling that you had included in your picture. And we thought it was amazing that you had remembered that limpets clamp themselves onto the rock really tightly, that they are camouflaged and that they eat algae. So well done, Bran. And with the challenge that I set you this week, if you would like to share your work online, please use the hashtag Ocean School and we will be able to see what you've done and we will share it with the others who are watching this live stream on Thursday. Okay, so today, as I said, we're moving on to a new topic and a new challenge. And the topic that we are going to be looking at is rock pools. And the challenge this week is going to be creating your very own rock pool rhymes, raps and poems. So, a rock pool rhyme or a rock pool rap, this is the challenge to have a go at. The words you write don't need to rhyme, but transport your audience underwater with each line. The eyes you choose do not need to be yours, perhaps a creature that scuttles or one that has claws. Your words will set the scene, whether it's happy, sad, scary, exciting, the choice is yours, so be bold and enticing. Now, what are rhymes, poems and raps, and what on earth are rock pools? These questions are essential to doing this task successfully, so are you ready to find out some more? Give me some thumbs up if you're ready to find out a little bit more about what we're going to be doing. Now, the rhymes, poems and raps that you guys create are going to transport your audience into the world of a rock pool. So you're going to be telling people about what it is like to live in a rock pool, what you can see, what you can feel, what you can hear. You don't need to be yourself, you can transform yourself into a different creature to write this piece. And we also have some resources on our website that are going to help you do this. So after this live lesson, which is going to take about 15 to 20 minutes long, you can head to the SAS website, and that is just sas.org.uk, head to the Digital Ocean School pages, and you can download the resources there. 
I've seen a question that says, can I be a rock? You can totally be a rock. If that is what you want to be, you totally can be. You can be anything you want. We even have some backing tracks up on the website. So if you're feeling super musical, you can actually even record a song and then upload that and we will share it in Thursday's lesson. Okay, so to write about a rock pool, we need to learn about rock pools. So are you ready to do that? Thumbs up if you are. And the first question I have for you guys is can anyone tell me what a rock pool actually is? I'm going to start describing it while I see these comments coming in. Now a rock pool can be many different shapes and sizes. Some of them are massive, taller than me, deeper than me, so you could have like a, a six foot deep rock pool. And some of them are really teeny tiny, just like the water that could fill the amount of your hand. Um, some of them are super sheltered, so hidden in the rocks, and it means that no sunlight could get to them. And then others are completely exposed, so that they will be battered by the storms and the weather and the elements. But each rock pool is a habitat to many different creatures. And yes, we've got some amazing comments coming through. It is a pool in the rocks, and you find them in the intertidal zone on a rocky shore. So, during the day, as the tides rise and fall, the rock pools appear and disappear. And when the tide goes out, that's when we can see the rock pools, because they are left on the side of the rocky shoreline here, and we can explore the different habitats that are in them. Now, what we're going to do in today's lesson is I am going to introduce you to the, some of the creatures that live in these rock pools, because this way you guys can get some inspiration for your rhymes, your raps and your poems by learning a little bit more about what live here. I'm going to start with some of the bigger animals and then we're going to get smaller as we go along. And the first animal I'm going to talk about, I think all of you guys will have heard of, and it is a crab. So I've got a drawing here. Now this crab is very green. They're not usually this green. I think this one's eaten a little bit too much seaweed. But in the UK we have 60 different species of crabs and they have a hard shell on their backs which they are, is an exoskeleton. So we have a skeleton inside our bodies and crabs have this exoskeleton on the outside of their bodies here. And this exoskeleton is their armor, so it protects them from predators. So if a bird is swooping above them and wants to eat or peck them, this exoskeleton protects them from doing that. Now, as crabs grow, their shells become too small for them. So something that's really cool is they actually molt their shells. So a little bit like taking your coat off if it's getting too small, but they take their shell off and they grow a new one. Um, but the only problem is when this happens, they have a little period of time where their back is very soft and it means they're super vulnerable and can be eaten quite easily without that shell on. Crabs, like this one, have 10 legs and they always have two big claws at the front here which they use to catch and crush and rip their prey. They can also use these claws to communicate with each other and fight other crabs which is awesome. In the UK I said we had 60 species. One of the biggest species of crabs that we have is called a common brown crab and if you have a piece of paper near you a common brown crab is the size of a width of an A4 piece of paper, just its body. So its body is about 20 centimetres wide, which is the size of an A4 piece of paper, which is crazy. And this crab is the crab that if you've ever eaten crab, you've probably eaten the common brown crab. It's the one that most people have in restaurants or, or anywhere else you might eat crab. Okay, moving on. Now I said I was going to get smaller, but actually I've gone for a bit of a wild card creature next because I think they're my favourite. And although sometimes you see them in rock pools, occasionally they're just out in the water in the ocean, that's where you mostly see them. When we find them in rock pools, it's often because they're coming towards the end of their life. So jellyfish is the creature I'm going to be talking to next. So. 
as they get old and as they come to the end of their life, they come closer into shore um, and they sit in the shallows or in rock pools until they actually die. So when we see them washed up on the beach or if we see them floating around in a rock pool, they're very likely to almost be nearing the time where they will die. This one here is a moon jellyfish and we have six species of jellyfish that are most common in the UK. Um, this one here, you can see these little hoops on the top of its head, so they're really visible if you see them in the sea or on the sand. And the hoops, they're not usually black, they're actually purple in colour, and this is their reproductive organs. So although it might look a bit like their brain or, or their mouth, it is not, it's their reproductive organs. And last week I spoke a little bit about some facts about jellyfish and I said that they had no eyes and no blood um, and they also um, don't have uh, any sense of smell or anything like that either, they just can communicate in different ways with each other. So, but which is the longest jellyfish? I can hear you guys uh, asking me that. Now, the longest jellyfish is the lion's mane jellyfish, and we do get that in the UK. The lion's mane jellyfish are beautiful brown and orange colours, they do look like a lion's mane. And the longest recorded lion's mane jellyfish was 30 metres. So that is the size of seven double-decker buses stacked on top of each other. 30 metres long! And their tentacles have their stinging cells in them. Now, in the UK, most of the jellyfish we have aren't deadly, however, they all sting. Now, the moon jellyfish, if we were to touch one, its stinging cells are quite weak um, for our skin, so it probably wouldn't hurt us, but just like a bee sting, different people can react to these, these stings in different ways, so it's always best to, uh, to stay away from them, really. Um, the lifespan of a jellyfish is quite interesting as well. Some can last just for a few hours, whereas others live for several years out in the ocean. So the jellyfish, if you guys want to research a little bit more into them, try and find out what the six species of jellyfish are that we have in the UK. So we've got Ian saying he saw one of those off the Pembrokeshire coast. The lion's mane, you can see a lot of those in Pembrokeshire as well as the moon jellyfish here. Um, and I don't think I would like to know how to eat... What, oh, do I know what jellyfish eat? This is a good question and I'm going to come to that at the end, Claire. Um, so thank you for asking me that because this is something that I'm going to ask back to you guys in a minute. So I won't reveal the answer yet, but thank you, Claire. Okay, we're going to move on to the next animal. And the next animal is definitely a rock pool inhabitant. I went a bit off track there. But we're going to talk about the blenny. So I've got one here. It's a bit of a strange drawing. But a blenny is something that you should definitely Google when you get the chance after this live stream. There are small little fish that live in the UK rock pools. They're only about 15 centimetres long and they're very, very shy, which I love about them as well. So they have quite strange proportions. Their head is really massive. They've got big lips and big eyes and they dart around in the rock pools and I mentioned they're shy but the reason that we know this is because as you approach a rock pool you often see something darting around and hiding straight away and that will be one of these, a blenny. And they are hiding from predators. So although as a human I'm not going to go up to the rock pool and eat one, they are hiding from perhaps crabs or birds or other predators that would swoop in and get them. Now, last week, if any of you guys were watching last week, you will have remembered that I said that blennies can last for many, many hours out of the water. They can still breathe out of the water. And the reason that they have adapted to do this is because they spend maybe half of their life out of the water as the tide goes out and half of their life underwater as the tide comes back in. But they've also developed a nickname and that is sea frogs. And the reason for this nickname is when the tide goes out and a blenny is left in the sand, they are actually very slow. So in the water they're super fast and they can dart away from any predators. But when they're stuck on the sand, they're just sort of 
stuck there like this and they're a bit useless so what they have been able to do is they can actually jump so if they're feeling threatened or if their resting place is disturbed they jump in the direction of the nearest patch of water to try and get themselves to a place where they can be fast and dart away again. So pretty cool fact about a blenny there and yes I really recommend you google these because they are so cute um, in a weird strange kind of way. Now if a blenny can't find a rock pool to jump to or while the tide's in what they actually sometimes do as well is they hide away in a little crevice or in a rock and they keep themselves wet with the seaweed that's in that crevice. So occasionally, if you're really good at looking along the shoreline, you can see some little eyes sticking out of a crevice and that can be a blenny hiding away in the rocks there, which is, is super, super cool. Okay, next animal. Now, I said I was gonna get smaller and this is super small. Okay, so the next animal is only about the size of your fingernail. So if everyone has a little look there, I wonder if anyone can guess how, what animal that will be. You find it on rock pools in the UK and it's only about the size of your fingernail. I might give it away. It is a barnacle. So here on this drawing, we've got two barnacles. Now these, there are thousands of barnacles that live all along the rocky shoreline of the UK. Oh, my finger's going in a strange direction there. But they live all along the rocky shoreline in the intertidal zone. So that is where the water rises and falls. I can see Yvonne, that was, limpet is a good suggestion and you often see barnacles next to limpets, but they're just much smaller. They're also incredibly sharp. So if you were to stroke your hand over a lot of limpets, it could actually cut them. They're, they're really sharp and spiky. Um, and this little bit at the front, so they have doors on their shells. And what they do when the tide goes out is a barnacle shuts its door tightly shut and it traps inside a little bit of water just enough to keep moist and so that it doesn't dry out during the day. But when the tide comes back in, they open up these doors and barnacles, they actually have quite long legs that look a little bit like feathers. So what they do is they stick their legs out of their door and these feathery legs sweep around in the ocean, um, filtering out the plankton and other little bits of algae that they eat, which I think is pretty incredible actually. So if you are walking along the, the shoreline and you see some of these, the ones with the doors shut, they still have an animal living inside them. Occasionally, you see a barnacle and it's just got sort of like a black hole, there's nothing in it. That's an old barnacle shell. Occasionally, little animals might crawl into their shell and live there instead of a barnacle. But if it's got its doors shut like this, then there's still a live animal living inside it. Now, barnacles actually arrived on the earth over 500 million years ago, which is crazy to think about, but they are an incredible animal that has been able to live through so many changes during the world. So perhaps they are almost much better adapted to life on earth than we are. Um, they also have both male and female reproductive organs. And the reason for this is because I spoke a little bit about it last week, but when they f are first born, they're swimming around in the ocean and the first thing that they attach their head to, maybe it's a rock, maybe it's a whale, or maybe it's the underside of a boat, the first thing they attach their head to, they then build this shell around themselves and they stay there for the rest of their lives. So they don't move around the rock, but the reason they then have both male and female reproductive organs is because they can choose what who they want to be depending on who they are next to. So if this one was a boy, this one would be a girl. And that's pretty cool. Very well adapted, very sensible creatures. Okay, so the last creature I'm going to talk about on this rock pool lesson is I think perhaps my favourite. And I did say I was going to get smaller and smaller and smaller, but I've, I've lied and I'm going to go bigger again. And this one is a starfish. So I've even got a big drawing of a starfish. 
So starfish are beautiful, beautiful creatures and you are very lucky if you see one. I've only ever seen a few in my life, um, but they're amazing and they can have a different number of legs. Some of them, most of them have five, but you can get starfish with up to 10 legs, which is awesome. I've never seen one of those myself, but hopefully one day. So last week we learned a cool fact about the starfish. We learned that starfish, they actually have eye spots at the end of their arms here. So their eyes aren't in the middle like you might expect if you were going to draw one, but they are on the ends of their arms here which is incredible. And another amazing fact about the starfish is they can actually regrow any part of their body if it is attacked or eating or eaten. So it's often crabs that will come and try and eat a starfish, maybe a bit like this luminous green one. Um, if a crab was to eat part of this starfish's leg, it can actually grow it back but it doesn't come back immediately. It takes almost a year for a starfish to do that, depending on how much was eaten. But it's a very, very good way of them being able to survive for longer. So starfish though, they're not completely innocent themselves. They also eat creatures that we find in the rock pools. And I'm gonna bring in a creature that we spoke about last week. Starfish eat mussels and the way they do this is, is kind of gross, but also kind of amazing. So unlike us, we have our mouths at the front. Starfish have their mouths underneath their bodies and their bums at the top of their bodies. And they also have two stomachs. So this means that they are able to eat animals that are way bigger than them. And they do this by pushing one of their stomachs outside of their body so that they can fit even more in, which is quite a good skill, I think, but it's probably also kind of very heavy to then swim around with. But yes, so they eat mussels, um, and then they uh, can sometimes have them in this second stomach that they've pushed outside of their body, which is incredible, but very, very, very strange. So, I hope you guys have been enjoying this rock pool lesson. It's almost been half an hour already, so I have to move over to Instagram soon. But I want to remind you of the challenge that we set at the start of this lesson. And that was for you guys to create a rock pool rhyme, poem or rap. And I said that there were resources on the SAS website, and I'm going to show you that now. So you just need to head to sas.org.uk, click on Digital Ocean School, and you can download your template for helping you make your Rockpool rhyme, poem or rap. You can also download the backing tracks if you would like to be super musical about it. And please do share your creations with us online using the hashtag Ocean School and at Surfers Against Sewage. And we can't wait to see what you come up with. I'll be back on Thursday morning at 11 a.m. And we will be doing a rock pool quiz to test your knowledge, but also sharing your rhymes, poems and raps. So thank you guys and I will see you on Thursday.